Hello, my name is James Mandelbaum. Today we're here to cover Gigamon Basics and Inline Bypass. The agenda for today, we're going to do a quick overview of Inline Bypass. We're going to discuss the different types of Inline Bypass. We're going to configure via the graphical interface and ultimately via the command line. Before we begin, it's important to understand what Inline Bypass is. It's the flow of data through the packet broker that provides bi-directional communication between the two network segments that's intercepted and potentially managed by that Gigamon node. It allows you for the ability to add inline tools virtually to your inline network in a protected state that minimizes or prevents network outages, thus providing more reliable networks while having inline and out-of-band tools for that data. When we ask the questions about why do we do inline, well, first of all, it's about providing tool failures for those inline tools. If I have an IPS or any kind of advanced threat and we put them directly in line on a traditional flow, if those tools have to be brought down for maintenance or they go down for any reason, you will bring the network down. What we're trying to do by moving it to a virtual inline is provide higher reliability and less impact on the network. We're also given the ability to distribute the tool, the load amongst multiple tools so we can do load balancing around the tools and gives you the ability to do both inline and out of band. And there's a lot of other options here which I'll give you a moment to read. There are a couple different kinds of inline bypass. First is an unprotected circuit, which we call a logical bypass. So if you look at the diagram, if I've got a switch to a router and I just grab any ports, what they are is, is an unprotected circuit. What that means is if the unit goes down, if you lose power or if someone pulls that blade out, that circuit is no longer passing traffic. It is in a down state. As an alternative, if you use a protected circuit, which is a physical bypass, that is a protection against failure. So if you lose power or someone pulls that blade, there's actually a physical relay that trips, whether we're talking an optical relay or we're talking a, a copper relay in there. But what it does is it allows that traffic to flow even if the box is down. It's available in our bypass and our tap modules. But the important thing is in a protected circuit, the link always stays up. So let's look at some diagrams to discuss that. When we did our flow lesson, if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to do so. This was the diagram we used where we looked at that north-south traffic. We inserted physical taps in there, which are passive. And then we fed that traffic into the Gigamon HC2 appliance here. And then we fed the traffic off to the advanced threat. Now, the thing is that this is out of band. It's not done in line, which means there is no way for that traffic. If it sees something and it wants to reset the traffic, there's no way for it to insert traffic in there. When we move into an inline flow, we basically remove that tap and we take that traffic and we insert it in line into the, the Gigamon appliance and then back out of the Gigamon appliance. And then that advanced threat tool can now be in line so that it can take action upon the traffic. So in our diagram, just to make life easier, if we take a look at the slots, card one, we have a standard port card. S slot two is a tap. Slot three is a different kind of port card. And then slot four is a bypass card. And these are the protected circuits. And we're gonna, this is important because we're gonna use that today in our examples. In an unprotected circuit like we have right here, if we lose power, that network goes down. Meaning that this circuit no longer operates. This tool, of course, won't see the traffic because the flow is not going. In a protected circuit, however, if we move those segments over into a protected circuit, while it's up and running, of course, that advanced threat now is in line and it can do whatever it needs to do to the traffic. But if we lose power, the traffic still flows through the circuit because this has a, as I said, a relay, a protected circuit. But the only difference is, is that, of course, the tools don't see the traffic but the network stays up. So if you're looking for how do I do a fail open, failed close solution, a lot of times it can be done by just simply either using a protected or an unprotected, unprotected circuit. To configure inline bypass, we've got a couple different ways we can do it. We can do it through the graphical interface, which we will do, you use your browser. There's also the command line option, which we will SSH into an appliance using admin privileges. And it can also be done using your VM console if you don't want to use SSH. 
We're going to walk through an example build out. And then at the end, I'm going to give you a command list of all the different commands that you can use if you want to use additional capabilities. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and log in. I've logged into the Gigamon appliance. We're going to be using the board in slot four, which is our bypass card. And we're going to go ahead and configure a protected circuit bypass. Before we begin, let's take a look at the ports. If we go to the last page here and we take a look at board four in slot four, and we take a look at the types of ports, they're all defaulted to network ports. But as soon as we get to 17 and above, you'll notice that they default to an inline network port. These are hard-coded protected ports, which means that ports 17 and 18 are a married pair. So if we go ahead and take a look at inline bypass, you will see that I've got an inline network right here. It is port 17 and 18. So configuring this is pretty darn simple. By default, this is a protected pair, port 17 and 18. It's got the ability right now for us to make decisions on what kind of feed this is going to be. Now let's kind of go ahead and go through what these four options mean. The first option is bypass. We use bypass typically for passive monitoring. All tool ports can see this for out of band. Inline tools cannot see the traffic, therefore it's rather limiting. But if you're not doing anything inline, this is probably your best option. If we want to do anything that inline tools can actually see the traffic as well, this is where we add the monitoring. Now it's important to understand that while inline tools can see the traffic, they can't do anything with the traffic and send it back. So any traffic that's sent back on the wire to take an action such as a session reset or any kind of action on it, it will be denied back out on the port. It's one direction. The important thing here is if you're trying to figure out what's going on, there is a counter that will show those traffic discards so you can see that you actually have a tool that's trying to send the traffic back. Now, if you have an active monitoring tool, which means inline, this is when you'll choose to inline tool. This means that both inline out and out of band tools can see the traffic. And for your inline tools, they can send traffic back on the wire. Now there's also the great portion here that if you configure failover, if you have inline tools, it will fail and logical bypass can occur when you've got it set to inline tool. The last one is drop. And I see a lot of people saying, well, why would you ever use this? It's important to say if you're trying to test something or you're trying to force a flow down another path, you can turn it to drop and it will do that. It will take every packet going through that, that flow and it will drop the packet. It's rarely used, but it's great for troubleshooting, testing, and forcing different paths. So back in this selection, we're going to go ahead and choose bypass with monitoring. And you'll see right now that it is in physical bypass, which means that the relay is, is tripped. I'm going to go ahead and just say OK and build my circuit. But you'll see that it is in physical bypass. I can go back, select it, edit it, turn that off. And now I'm actually passing the data. Now the second part of this is if we wanted to configure this in the command line. To do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to configure the ports. Now in our case, we're going to go ahead and use ports 1 and 2 on card 4, and we're going to create a logical bypass. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tell it that we're going to change the port type to be inline network. We're going to force them to be enabled. By default, ports are disabled, so we're going to go ahead and administratively enable them. We're going to give them a couple aliases. I'm going to say, OK, this is our inline traffic for the north. The second port is going to be our inline traffic for the south. We're going to go ahead and create the inline network. We're going to give it an alias. And we're going to call it bypass north south. We're going to give it a pair. On the network A side, it's going to be 14x1. Network B side is going to be 14x2. And we'll show the inline network. Now, one thing to remember, we're doing in our demo, we're going to be doing a logical bypass. But if we were doing this on a protected circuit, as you notice in our demo, I had to check the box to make it actually passing traffic and not in a physical bypass. You would issue the command for inline network alias north south and then the physical bypass disable. So that's that way I would make it so it could actually pass traffic and see the traffic versus just being relay protected. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and log in. 
I'm going to do an enable configure terminal. First thing I'm going to do is I need to configure my ports. So I'm going to do port, box one, card four, port one, and port two. Type is going to be inline network. Now I've configured the ports. Now we need to turn them on. Now we've gone ahead and enabled the ports. So now once we've enabled the ports, we can go ahead and give them some friendly names. And that's the alias command. And we're going to call this inline north. So that's our northbound traffic. And then we're going to do port 14x2 alias. Oops, helps if I spell it right. Inline south and now I've got my ports configured and what we're going to do when we're done is we're going to go into the graphical interface and show you what this looks like as well so once I've now got my ports configured I need to go ahead and create my inline network so I'm going to go ahead and do inline network let's give it a an alias and we're going to call it bypass north south so I'm creating a bypass for our north or south. We're going to tell it the pair. The first is the network side A, which we're going to give it as 14x1. And, whoops, and network side B is going to be 14x2. And it's actually built. So if I go ahead and do a show inline network, you'll see that I've got an alias of bypass north south. The A side is 14x1 with an alias of inline north. The B side of 14x2 and in inline south. I've got link fail propagation enabled. Physical bypass is disabled because again, this is an unprotected state. And my forwarding state right now is disconnected. Unfortunately, I don't have anything plugged into those ports, but if a forwarding state would be in it would be connected if I had something connected and that's all it takes to go ahead and build bypass let's go ahead and take a look at it now in the graphical interface to see what that looks like if you remember before we had this inline bypass and we had these four inline networks we were working on this one if I refresh the screen you'll now see I bypass north south if we click on it you can see that we've got some nice friendly names. Port A is inline north, port B is inline south. Let's go ahead and edit it. And you can see now that it shows, while it isn't only the friendly names, but it shows the ports there and our path is in bypass. Now we could have given the command to tell it a different path. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different commands we have available to us. These are the commands we used in our example. Now again, if this was a protected circuit, we would have to tell it to disable that physical bypass. Additional commands available here. You can put comments. You can do LFP enable if it's not. You can create redundancy profiles. And you can, this is where you can set the path, whether you want to do bypass with monitoring or two inline tools or to drop through the simple command. And the, these are great commands to have. At any time, you can always hit the question mark. So if you type inline network question mark all of these come up and a couple more that allow you to do this in review we had a quick overview of inline bypass why you would use inline bypass and the functionality it provides we discussed the different types protected or unprotected logical or physical we configured via the graphical interface and we discussed the different options you have and we also configured an unprotected via the command line I'd like to thank you for viewing this video. There are more videos available on the Gigamon community page and the Gigamon YouTube channel. And as always, remember, when you make these changes, be sure to save them. Otherwise, on a reboot, you will lose them. Thank you very much. Be sure to follow me on Twitter.